guys, welcome back to my channel. It's the first brew of the year. It is the 13th of January. It's been a long time coming. I, I brewed like mad at the end of last year to up my uh, beer content. Had a friend over, we drank all of it. So I'm starting off with the neck oil clone from Clive Cutter. I'm going to... The, the, the last one was really quite close. I just felt there's a bit more malt sweetness in the commercial version, so I'm going to mash higher. Um, and I'm going to try to keep it around 5%. I'm going for 40 litres this time instead of 30. Um, so I should be able to fill two cakes. So the grain bill... Oh, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll just put it all up here. There's quite a lot of hops going in this, but uh, pause it, have a look, and uh, time to dough in. Got a cool, uh, use the, the, these wine champagne stopper things to do that because they're always the first thing you lose. With about just about an inch of clearance uh, there. And then we will start recirculation. I'm going to keep that at about 66 and a half, 67, um, to get more unfermentable sugars. Um, but I've upped the grain bill, like I said, to compensate for that. So hopefully it works out well and come along for the ride. Check how clear this wort is. <clears throat> got uh, 15 minutes left of the mash and then I'll raise up the temperature to uh, 75. I have slightly overshot my mash temperature here so it was more like 67, 67 and a half so it's probably too high. See what happens. Okay so that's the end of the mash. I'm now going to turn it up to put it onto the boil keep recirculating until it hits 75, then I'll take the grain basket out and sponge. Okay, we've hit 75 degrees Celsius now, so I'm going to stop the recirculation, pull the uh, malt pipe out, let it continue to the boil. I am going to boil some of the water that's going to go through for the uh, sponge, uh, which will be about 10 litres altogether. Okay, so I've done the sponge. Uh, just, a, just about 30 litres there, it's probably more like 31 once the squad is finished, maybe 31 and a half. And I have 12 litres of cold water outside for my cold crash, which, uh, which will just do the cold break and all of that, get it out of isomerization temperature. So I'll do the brew, I'll do the steep, the hop stand, and then chuck the ice cold water in, give it a big stir, whirlpool effect, um, leave it for 20 minutes to everything, so everything can calm down, transfer it into the fermenter, chuck it in the garage and pitch the yeast tomorrow. Okay, so this is something new that I want to try. Um, I've put a black bag, because it's winter here they don't collect the garden waste and it'll end up going pretty rancid in there, so I'm going to try tip this straight into the black bag so I can wash this. We're at uh, 85, 86 degrees Celsius now, so time to wash this, get ready for the boiler. Oh, 
Well, that worked pretty well. I got a little bit of wet on the floor here, but uh, not too much, so. Okay, so we've just hit the boil. What I do is I set my boil timer to 62 minutes. So I know I've got the boil going. And then it gives me a couple of minutes to just get the hot bag ready, all of that stuff, and make sure I'm not gonna get a boil over. Um, so the first hop set going in, 25 grams uh, centennial. Um, 60 minute hops. Okay, so that's the brew done. We had flame out about five minutes ago. So what I'm gonna do now, get the old gloves on, um, squeeze out the hop bag, because I don't wanna lose any uh, of those lovely hop oils. And the last time I made this, the bitterness was about bang on, and I also squeezed out the bag on that one. <clears throat> My only concern is I've got a bit of a smell of like a, um, like a clothes wash liquid when I used the bag. Now I can't remember if I washed it with like with with wash up stuff or not. Hopefully I rinsed it and it's just like that fresh smell rather than something permeating into the beer. Um, but it's a bit too late to worry about it, so let's crack on. Uh, what I have tried to do is minimize the amount of the bag that's gone into the wort. So at this point, only, only enough of the bag has gone in there to, uh, to warrant keeping the hops wet and hot. <clears throat> so these gloves help with the Lie on 100 degree. Well, oh, it's already down to 93, so not too bad. Okay, so that is ready for the cold water now. I have. About 11 liters here and I'm at about 28 liters there, 29 liters there, so it should be about 40 altogether, which is perfect. to give the kitchen floor a bit of a wash but uh, look at that cold break as soon as you pour that water in there there's a great cold break that goes off so uh, yeah I've got the fermenter here I've uh, just got a little bit of sanitizer in the fermenter so I'll rinse that out give that a whirlpool wait 20 minutes and then come back to do the transfer Okay, I'll just show you the whirlpool. I'll literally just do that with the with the mesh pedal. That's our sand in there, so no stress. Um, so yeah, I'll just wait 20 minutes. The temperature on that has gone down to 65 degrees Celsius. Not as cold as I would have wanted, but uh, it's under 79, and it'll only get colder. So. I don't think I need to film the rest. We'll go in the fermenter, I'll put it in the garage overnight and pitch the yeast tomorrow morning when it goes in the fermentation chamber. Uh, USO5, two packets, and it'll be going in there. I'll come back to you to check the gravity. I'm just waiting for the sample to cool down. Um, after squeezing that hot bag, it's gone very uh, cloudy. It was quite clear before. But that's fine. I'll see you at the end. Okay, doing the transfer now. Um, again, works not as clear as I had hoped, but I'll deal with that on the other side. If necessary, I will uh, gelatine fine it. Um, but it looks like 40 liters on the button in here, so maybe 39 in the uh, in the fermenter. 
So about 36 perhaps in the cake. So 18 and 18 should be good. Um, the gravity came in at 1050 on the dot, which I think is two points higher than it needed to be. All good. Um, it smells and tastes amazing. The, it's super bitter at the moment. I hope it doesn't end up that bitter. Um, I know it always does die back, but I'm hoping it dies back big time because it's super bitter at the moment. Apart from that, effortless brew day. It's uh, nearly 11 p.m. here. I started about quarter past seven, so not too bad. Give me another 15 minutes uh, after the transfer to clean everything up and. Uh, it's four hours. Okay, so primary fermentation is finished. The diastole rest is done. Um, I ended up on 10.08. I don't know how I managed to do that. It was on 10.14 and I thought, perfect, that's probably my final gravity. Raise the temperature for diastole rest. Check the next day and it was on 10.08. USO5. So anyway, um, I've got here 100 grams or probably 120 grams of uh, mosaic, 100 grams of amarillo, Ooh. that's a different aroma, and then probably about 75 grams of galaxy leaf hops. What I'm going to do with this, last time I made this, I, I found there's a bit of a raft of um, hops on top uh, uh, because I don't open the fermenter fully, I just open the little top bit and pour everything in. Um, so what I'm going to do this time, I've got some boiled cooled water. I'm just going to put all the hops in there, it's probably about half a litre. I'm going to put them in there and I'm going to let them soak. It's cool, it's below 20 degrees Celsius. Um, It's, it's just that it allow, will, it will allow me to stir them in and get them all properly saturated in water. So when I chuck them in there, they'll mix in. They'll mix in nicely with the rest of the um, uh, wort. So uh, we are on now, it's Sunday. So I pitched the yeast on Tuesday night. I, I hit final gravity yesterday, Saturday, uh, 10.08. Um, this will go in today. I've dropped the temperature today down to uh, 14 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to check these in and then I'm going to drop the temperature one degree each day until Friday. Then I'm going to drop it down to one degree Celsius until Sunday night and then cake. Okay, well that's it all mixed in. Um, <laughs> you don't get a lot of moisture left over after, that was about half a litre of water, um, but I've definitely made sure that it's all nice and mixed in. So I won't lose as much to the hops, but also I should get a little bit more, hopefully, the hops will be in the mixture a little bit more the whole time. So see you at the tasting. Okay, just a quick one. We are doing the transfer. It's not quite a closed transfer because I haven't got the CO2 connected up here. Um, but it's coming up through the filter. You can see there's quite a bit of hops caught in there already. Um, I've had to raise the filter so that the entry is lower than the exit because it was filling with uh, bubbles. But I think it was because um, because there's CO2 in here because it was slightly under pressure. So it's probably just the CO2. I don't think there's any um, oxygen being sucked in. Well, I hope not. Um, so I'll have two kegs full of this, wash that out, and then I've got another brew on today. And just like that, it's tasting day. So uh, that is from the keg. This is from the can. Let's have a little look. You see a big color difference straight away. So what I've done with these two is the this one looks like it's actually just extra pale. That's, it. That's just extra pale. This one had 50 grams of chocolate malt and, and extra pale Maris Otter. It's far too much uh, Maris Otter. Uh, carbonation, 
This one's got it streaming up. This is carbonated, but it's a lot colder because it's from the keg, which is in the garage. Super cold. Um, the head is dissipating on this. It's keeping a cap. Um, just keeping the cap there. So let's, you can definitely see this one, although it's not quite clear, drop clear, it's, uh, it's a hazy beer still. It would still be darker. Maybe not, maybe I'm being a little bit too, maybe if that had dropped clear it would be okay, but I think I'm just going to drop the chocolate malt altogether. So, aroma. Definitely getting all the hops. Slightly less hop aroma on this um, and, and a little bit more malt. So, hmm, interesting. Let's uh, dive in. <coughs> So I brewed this one slightly uh, mashed at a higher temperature to try and retain more sugars and the bastard fermented down to 1008 so pretty much the same as the last one. I can taste some more sweetness in there and I think it's the I think it's the galaxy hops that's doing it because when you smell the galaxy hops you can always smell that sweetness. Uh, I'm not sure but a lovely flavour. I mean, got two kegs of it and it's not gonna it's not gonna hang around. Definitely less less hops on the uh, on the taste, on the flavour. And a slight sort of, there's more bitterness, there's more bitterness in this one than in this one as well. This one's got a little bit of sweetness. Flavours are not far off. The, the flavours are on both are not far off. This one might be a little bit colder so perhaps we'd have a bit more flavour if it warmed up a bit. Um, So, in short, not quite hit it on the colour, I'm going to remove the uh, chocolate malt. The aroma, I would say, goes to the original. The flavour itself, I would say, goes to the clone. Um, and I would go as far as to say that I would prefer to drink the clone than to drink this one. I, I think this one tastes almost like it's been filtered and it's super clean. Whereas this one, it's like the flavor is just a little bit more rounded off. And I don't, I'm not saying that an either is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying in my personal preference, this one, this one's almost got like sort of a lager mouthfeel to it. And this one has an ale mouthfeel to it. So IPA. Okay guys, well that was uh, the grain to glass, I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to do this brew again, I'm not going to video the brewing process or anything like that, but I might come back and do another glass side uh, review, see if I can get it closer to this. I don't, this is carbonated enough for me, this here is, is it's actually a little bit over carved, you can see that head's not dying back either. Um, but she's super, the bubbles in there are insane. Whereas on here, I mean if you give it a swirl, you can see, you can see the bubbles are there. Um, but probably because it's so cold. Um, it's only been in the keg for a few days. Um, so I'll catch you guys on the next one. The next one will be, I've done a, a West Coast IPA that I, I won in a competition. Um, that's still in the fermenter. And then I'm going to do a nice, uh, I'm going to do it like a landlord or something like that in my next brew. So I'll catch you guys on the next one and keep on watching.